to be a conservator, um, first off, I didn't know the profession existed until I got fired from a job 30 some years ago. If you walk in here, you may see all kinds of different objects, anything from paintings, leather, historic documents, ethnographic material, as well as large macro objects. We have different conservators with different backgrounds and areas of specialization, and everybody on our team brings something different to the table. Collectors in the car world have kind of begun to realize that maybe not all vehicles warrant a restoration. I feel like that's a relatively new concept, you know, the last decade or so. When vehicles are deemed original and historically significant, those same principles that we've been using for decades in the art world, museum world, are now being applied to automobiles. This vehicle is a 1920 Model T Depot hack. It had been brought out of a barn and then put in a really bad storage conditions for probably another 20 years. I bought this vehicle primarily to use it as a, an opportunity to introduce principles of conservation into a vehicle that could be driven. I kept thinking, you know, there's a need here that's not being met. These are objects that were made to be used. And that's a great debate in conservation. You know, should you use a one-of-a-kind artifact or should it just sit static in a collection? This isn't a rare race car. It's not one of a kind. There are other vehicles that we've worked on. I mean, we've worked on the 1899 Packard and we did run that engine to fully clean it and, and rather to mothball it. That car sits in a glass box at Lehigh. It is very rare, one of a kind, and I'd probably err on the side of let's not drive that car. If there were 24 of them, then maybe we could have a different approach. I'd like to see functionality continue, but when that functionality may cause its destruction, I, I can't answer that question. I mean, I have to make that decision based upon my feeling for this car. If it just was an original condition sitting here, as opposed to me jumping in it, starting it, so people could hear what a Model T sounds like and watching me try to drive it and having my family laugh at me, that's priceless too. And that's something that I wanted to make sure we could do. This vehicle has been completely taken apart. All the wood is original, except for a few parts that were missing, we've had to replace. The bottom rails on a couple of these doors had fallen off. So those pieces have been remade and then toned to blend and then uh, put a coating on it that's a reversible acrylic. When we can, any new piece is marked or stamped. So someone who's doing really a close examination could know that's a replaced part or look at it with a UV lamp to tell that that's not an original component. I don't want my work to be interpreted as the work of the original maker. All the metal has been cleaned and there's a coating on the metal as well. The acrylic coatings that we're putting on are to reduce the exposure to moisture and oxygen, which accelerates corrosion. So the corrosion is there underneath, but this coating allows it to remain. We can go outside with it, it can get rained on, and it's not gonna get worse. So it's actually protected. One of the things we use uh, on black painted metal was tannic acid. It is a typical conservation treatment of historic iron. It visually improves it take, by taking that orange iron oxide, turning it black to an iron tannate. So visually it pulls it together and also produces a surface that is chemically more stable and less prone to rust. In fact, I first read about it in an early 19th century day book from a trapper, and they would take their animal traps and they would boil them in tannic acid, which is oak bark. So there are a lot of old things that can be used like tannic acid and other treatments, but there are a lot of old things that you want to avoid at all costs. I think there's talk about using mayonnaise on paintings to make them saturated and look better. I mean, there's always the people using ketchup and salt and to clean copper, which is like the worst thing you can do. We're always looking back. We're looking back at what's been done and how is that effective. But the problem with like buying a product off a shelf is you don't really know what it what it is. I mean, I bought products 20 years ago and think, oh, that's a great thing. And now I buy it and I, I smell it or I look at it and it's now full of ammonia. We don't use ammonia on copper or brass because it causes intergranular corrosion. So a product that may have been good, a proprietary product, they're always changing. And so we tend to make our own. In order to even get into a, a conservation training program, you know, it's a three-year graduate program, there's like three in the country, you need to basically have a, a studio art background, uh, at least probably two years of chemistry at the university level, and probably equal amount of time in art history. Chemistry is part of what we do in every project. We're dealing with solvent gels, we're making up aqueous cleaning solutions where we're, we're adjusting the pH. When I entered graduate school, I told them that the last time I used my chemistry book was to press leaves for an art project. Um, so that's, um, 
That wasn't the answer they were looking for, but they let me in anyhow. So chemistry is a secondary set of knowledge for me. It's not my greatest strength but it's something that we depend on and have to use in everything we do. And so if I have questions, I go to the person who is on our staff who can be contacted. She's not here, she's adjunct, so we're, we don't have her every day and we don't have chemistry questions every day. But when we do, we know who to go to. So here we have the Sheridan Gates. Uh, these were built after the Civil War. Uh, they were commissioned after General Sheridan and they were hung up for Arlington National Cemetery. These were front and center, had large columns up the sides of them. They would have been covered in gold leaf, and they were a beautiful entryway into the cemetery. These are wrought iron, very low carbon content. It won't rust very easily, which is a great thing. Here in this case, we're going for a total restoration. These plan to be opened and closed daily on the cemetery. People will be touching them with their hands, creating abrasion points. They will be out in the weather, in the rain, in the snow, in the heat. So we need to make sure that our paint will stand up to it and that our corrosion barriers will not form any rust. We will maintain the original structure, the frame, and all the ornate detail but some pieces are totally broken, missing, or have rusted through that it just wouldn't make a lot of sense to reuse this because it needs to function properly. We have had new ones made out of sheet metal as an exact replica. So in this case, these will sit on the top instead of these ones. In other parts, there are broken leaves. There's only one leaf on here and there should be 50 of them. So while I can keep the one leaf and put that back on, some pieces have to be remade. We have stars that are broken or pieces that have totally rusted through. We've had new pieces made and then they will eventually get gold plated like this on the end. So hopefully these will last longer than my lifetime. By leaving that one completely intact, as we go through this one and find out things about this, we can still reference that one as original. I really hope that by learning about this one, that yes, our work will go much faster on the other one. This is one of the most labor intensive things I've ever had to work on. You get a sense of pride when you get to go around the country and see your work and other people enjoying it or it pops up on Facebook. You can always say, yeah, I, I worked on that. It's, it's a really cool feeling. To be a conservator, um, first off, I didn't know the profession existed until I got fired from a job 30 some years ago. What it's allowed me to do is try to find a way, I loved working with my hands, uh, you know, building things and building houses. I, I really enjoyed that. There's real satisfaction, but intellectually, it kind of stopped challenging you. Uh, there was a time before that that I was a chemistry major. That was purely intellectual. I mean, that was, but there was nothing tangible there for me. So I was always trying to find that mix of hand, using your hands and using your head. In conservation, that's it.